everybody, and welcome to the Chemistry 121 Supplemental Instruction video series. I'm Joey Smokey, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about Lewis structures a little bit more. Now, if you watch the concept video, video, you already know what Lewis structures are used for. They're used to show the bonding within a compound. Now, it might seem pretty simple, but unfortunately, like most things, Lewis structures can get really complicated really fast. So I'm going to go ahead and do this episode to show you guys an example to kind of include all those different exceptions and complications and all that to make your life a little bit easier. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to work with the sulfate ion. Now, if you remember what that is, it's SO4 with a negative 2 charge. Okay, now we're going to draw the Lewis structure for this thing. Now, I want you to notice a couple of things before we start. First of all, you see the negative 2 up there. Now, what that means is that within the structure, you have an additional 2 electrons. Now, that's really important because when we get to the Lewis structure, you'll see that there's going to be a need to put those 2 electrons somewhere. We'll get to that in a minute. The other thing I want to talk to you about is that there are some things on the periodic table that can violate the octet rule. If you remember from the concept video, we talked about cyanic acid, and you notice that there is a triple bond between the carbon and the nitrogen, so that the carbon and the nitrogen both had only eight valence electrons. You know, they were happy. They behaved like the closest noble gas. But what can happen is that after you get past a certain point, and usually it's phosphorus on the periodic table, you can violate the octet rule, and that's what we're going to be doing here. Because in Lewis structure for sulfate, the sulfur ion, or the sulfur atom rather, is going to have more than four bonds. It's going to have more than eight electrons around it. Okay? So, now that we got all that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So the first thing that we should do is that we should look at you know, how these atoms are probably going to be oriented in the Lewis structure. There's only one sulfur, so we've got four oxygens there, and it's a pretty reasonable guess we can assume that sulfur is going to be in the middle, which is exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to go ahead and erase this so we can draw this nice and big. So we have the sulfur in the middle. Now you're going to want to figure out how many valence electrons it has. And it has six, and we're going to draw the dots for that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like that will work. Okay? And then we have the four oxygens, which we know will be all around the sulfur. So we'll put one there, we'll put one there, one there, and we'll say one there. Okay? Each oxygen also has six electrons. So we'll do one there, one there. Do. It takes a while when you the dots sometimes. Okay, so there we go. We have our oxygen and our sulfur. We've got all the dots on there. Now, then what we're going to have to do, obviously, is start connecting the dots. Okay, so it's pretty simple. We're obviously going to have one bond to each oxygen, so we can start with that. We can say one bond there. And remember, each time you do a bond, you're going to want to take away two electrons. One bond there. One bond there, and one bond there. Okay, so now that we're at this point, we see a couple of things. First of all, all of the oxygens aren't happy. They don't have their complete octet. They don't have eight. Oxygen always must have eight. Otherwise, it's just going to pretty much blow up the world. Oxygen likes to have its eight. Okay? The other thing we notice is that the sulfur has two electrons still around it that haven't been bonded yet. Okay? And remember what I said about sulfur since it's passed? Phosph phosphorus, you know, it can violate the octet rule. Okay, so what that means then is that we can go ahead and add two more bonds to the sulfur, just like this. Okay, now we notice something. When you look at these two oxygens here, we see that their octet is fulfilled. They have all eight electrons. This oxygen has four electrons from these bonds here, because each bond represents two electrons, right? And then we have four electrons up here. That's eight, so it's happy. Same thing with the oxygen down here. Now we can clean this up and make it look kind of nice by putting the dots like this. And the same thing over here. Basically, I'm just moving the dots. You can do that if you want to make your picture look a little bit better for your lower structure. That's absolutely allowed. Okay? So we see we have all the bonds to the sulfur. It's good. It's violated the octet rule, obviously, but that's okay since it can do that. These oxygens are happy, but these two oxygens are not. They only have seven electrons. We have two here, and then we have five there. Same for both of them. Now remember what I mentioned earlier on about the sulfate ion? It's got two additional electrons that we can use. So what we can do then is that since these two oxygens need one more electron, all we do is just pop on an extra electron for each of them. That's all we got to do. Since we have those two extra electrons, just put them on there just like that. Now what happens when we did that is that we gave each oxygen a formal negative charge, which I don't really got to worry about that too much, but basically that just means we added an extra electron, so that gives it a negative charge. Okay? 
and this would be the sulfate Lewis structure. And there's one other thing I'm going to show you guys, and that's that if you think about it real closely here, where the double bond is, it doesn't really matter where it goes because we could have these two oxygens having a double bond or these two, you know. There's different rearrangements of how you can do that. So what that means is that the sulfate ion has what's called resonance structures, meaning that there's more than one correct Lewis structure. So if you came up with a Lewis structure that's a little bit different than this, but it's still essentially the same, that's okay. It's probably just a resonance structure. So to designate that, we use brackets to say that it, this is pretty much what one of the structures is, okay? And also, since we have those extra two electrons, we're going to have to put the two minus up on the top corner there, just like that, okay? So, there you go. Lewis structures for the sulfate ion. Like I said, it gets a little bit more complicated, but, I mean, it still makes sense. Just think about what's going on with the electrons, where they're going, how things are bonding, and make sure that everything is happy with the octet rule. That's basically all you got to do. All right? We'll see you guys later. Go out there and practice with some, practice with some Lewis structures.